been as out at Hawking Water. The wind started blowing, the mists cleared, and there they were. Tell us, windmills. He? Windmills. Windmills. What? Like in Holland, full of little mice with clogs on and that. Oh, worse than that, much worse. Windmills, hundreds of feet high, with planes whirling at all hours of the day and night, and strange electrical sparks flying to the night sky. You've been eating too much cheese, boyo. That ex more old mouldy stuff Bill Voles makes. Lovely stuff it is, but it'll give you nightmares. No, this wasn't a dream. It was a premonition. Something's coming, and when it does, we all need to be ready. Up on the moor, close your eyes. <laughs> Ground beneath feet, toes against soil, rock beneath earth, fire beneath rock, the movement of the world. Clouds dream overhead, weather rolls in, wind races cold on your skin. Vastness of sky, distant horizon, misty line of trees, hills beyond to cliff and shore. Stars. Above street lights, glare and sign, simply nothing. Earth turns, fire falls, green arises, year rolls by. Spring, first sun fires blossom, stirs the frozen ground. Summer, growth. Evenings draw down, fruit hangs heavy on the vine. Autumn mists, skins grow thicker, fires warm through winter. Wood smoke in the valleys. Darker, snows fall. All is dead or sleeping. The more mix. Taste it. Smell it. Before it is gone. Taste it. Before it is too late. Smell All this in your hand. Of snowdrops. Keep your voices down. What's the word? Gets out the snowdrops will fall bloom. There'll be thousands of tourists flocking to the valleys to see them like bees to a honey pot. And the roads will get blocked with cars. Everyone reversing and trying to get past. People getting angry, destroying the verges, eroding the paths. We have to do something about all these tourists. This land calms the spirit. A universe of beauty reflected in a raindrop. Its cold spring air cleans your soul. This is why they come, like bees to a honeypot. From all over this land, from the smoky mill towns, the chaotic capital, the underground railroads, arterial highways, packed into sharabans for a day in the country, for the freedom. The breathing. 
Rays of sunlight slip the valley. A thousand pure white petal heads open. A blanket of living snow. Hang on a minute. Look at that. I ain't never seen anything like it. Never in all my life. It's beautiful. 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 Sorry, mate. Ladies first. <laughs> All stood there they was, gulping like goldfish. Anyone would have thought they'd never seen a flower before. Yeah, probably hadn't, some of them. So she says to me, are you the farmer then? Of course I'm the flaming farmer, says I. You think I'm shifting this cow up for fun? Oh, we should do rides, Dad. Me? Your pony rides take the tourists out. Ten bob an hour, more money in that than farming. You wash your mouth. If my old pa could hear you now. Yeah, yeah, I know. He used to say, look after the land. And the look after you. Oh. Yes, Dad, you've been telling me since I was a kid. But the only money is in sheep, and we haven't got any more room for them. Government says keep sheep, so that's what we do. You know I don't like it. What with the goats, hens and pigs all having to go, but we got no choice. Well, and then there's the paperwork. Two whole days and half lot took me. I thought my head was going to explode. Dad always said keep it small. Yeah, everyone works together. Mm. But they don't, do they? Well, people get their milk from them new supermarkets now, not the local dairy. And what with all the new tractors, machinery, there's no jobs there for plows and all that players no more, we'd be better off. Turning the bottom field into a campsite. We'd make more money. This is a farm, not a ruddy holiday camp. But you've got to move with the times, Dad. Oh, well, what would you know about it? I've lived on Exmoor my whole life, same as you. Yeah, but... But what? Nothing. No, go on, say it. No, it's just... I'm a girl. I never said that. No, but you're thinking I it, I never Dad. said... No, I can handle the plough, and I? Yes. I can handle the horses and get the stock in. I know. You complain when I'm mucking out the parlour in the middle of winter. It's just farming's man's work, that's all. Grandfather left it to his son, and my car left it to me. So what am I supposed to do then? The farm's dying. Dad! Then we've got to do something. Tourism, that's the way of the future. We're not turning this land into some theme park. I'm right. You'll see. Oh, yeah. Well, your dinner's ready. Love, I... Will you listen to me? Why don't you just let me explain? Smells the nose, come on, follow me. What the? Is someone playing silly blatters? Who keeps moving my furniture around? Smithers! Yes, sir. Dithers! Yes, sir. Come along, we have important things to discuss. What's the next item on the agenda? Walkers and riders. It's a big problem, sir. Walkers keep getting lost. They're wandering around in circles, following each other like sheep. They're leaving gates open, dropping litter. So, I've taken the trouble of producing the short report. And I think you'll find that we are pretty close to a solution. Now, we've already waymarked some of the walks around the Dulverton area and in some of the more popular areas on the Somerset side. We've even produced little booklets to help people with the walking routes. But... There are people on the Devon subcommittee who say that the signposts spoil the views and that the colour coding we've introduced leaves everyone even more confused, wandering around in circles in the middle of nowhere. Frankly, it's a bit of a mess. Ma! Barbie? Barbara? You see that block over there? Walker? We passed four times years now. Go man and say.
Oh, no, there's a path around here someplace. Oh, here, mister, close that gate. Is it over there? Here, mister. Well, is that it over there? Come on, Tad. You can't leave that gate open like that. So is that north, then? And put that dog on a lead. What about our land? What is it, south? Oh, I don't know. I'm wandering around in circles here. Oh. I might as well ask the sheep for directions. Oh. Hi, Flossie. I don't suppose you know the way to Dalverton, do you? Follow the river. Follow the river. Look at me, chap. I'm off me chump. I'm asking a sheep for directions. No, it's this way. I'm sure of it. And put that dog on a lead. Close that gate. Oh, you see? What did I tell you? Humans, stupid. So I've taken the trouble to write this report, and if you take the trouble to read it, you will see that we are pretty close to a solution. Now, I've already earmarked the important passages here, here, and here, and I've circulated a memo to the Standards Committee, the Substandards Committee, the Substandards Subcommittee, and to the Standing Substandards Subcommittee. Some of them won't take it sitting down, but I think if we get the whole thing up on its feet, we can all move forward. What on earth are you blithering on about? We need a scheme, sir. What? A better way marking for walkers, sir. Signs on the gates, fines for littering, advice for horse riders, that sort of thing. I've got your scheme. Dear, people can't understand it, sir. People can't understand it, Land sir. it's getting dangerous up there. Especially in winter. You're haunted, too. Yeah. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, no, really. I heard a tale of a farmer. I went for a ride near the Ackland Arms by Chalicum. Never seen again. <laughs> farmer Mole, his name was, strayed off the path and was sucked up by a bog. <laughs> sucked up by a dog? Oh! <laughs> no, man, sucked up by a bog. Never mind, now his ghost haunts the place, screaming, I've lost my way, I've lost my way. Oh, what a piss-posh did it, sit down. And plus, uh, the farmers are getting sick of rescuing people and or pulling waterlogged cars out of the fort at our steps. I've got it. Oh, another genius idea, I suppose. Yes, education, path wardens. We need to teach people about them all. Smithers, I... Smithers. I don't believe it. You actually had an idea that will really work. Well done, boy. Well done, boy. Well done. You really are the most incorrigible sucker I have ever met. I've lost my way. I've lost my way. More like lost your marbles. Well, that's not very fair. I'll have you know I am a highly qualified man. Highly qualified? You haven't even passed your cycling proficiency. That's not true. Don't listen to him. It's it's a rumour. That's what it is. There was a little baby bird. It, It got in my way. I'm actually a very good cyclist. Smithers! Come along, children. Off the bus and go to the little kids. Vincent's are going to be outside on the moor today. I think it's a bit nippy. Now, Jamie Jenkins. Yes, sir. Excellent. Lucy Small. Yes, sir. Excellent. Everyone present and correct. Oh, Jenkins, oh. look at that view. That's got a special quality, hasn't it, sir? Oh, yes. Don't see a view like that very often, do you? Can we have our sandwiches now, sir? What you got me? Cheese and jam. Yuck. It's nice. Try some. Uh, I'd rather stick my fingers down my throat oh. and honk up all over my shoes. Disgusting. Don't be so revolting, Jenkins. Oh, sorry, sir. Well, I'll have our sandwiches later. Now, we're here to learn about the flora and fauna of Exmoor. I've got an auntie flora, sir. Animals, Jenkins. Now, a question. Who owns the moor? Mm, rich folks, sir. The moor is divided up into private farms and estates. Ooh. More than 800 of them in total. Let me pay attention. There's going to be a little test later on. Exmoor was designated a national park in 1954 and covers 267 square miles, most of which is cultivated farmland. It stretches from Cool Mountain in the west along the coast of Minehead, southeast round the Bread of Hills, back to Dover to the Nancy Common, and northwest back to Cool Martin. Are you writing this down, children? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, good. Oh. Theologically speaking, the moor is made up of sandstone, slate, shale, and limestone laid down during the Devonian period of the Paleozoic era some 350 million years ago today. Oh, yes, sir, that's even older than you are. The highest point is Dunkery Beacon oh. at 519 metres, and the surrounding area of hills known as the, known as the Chains contains the sources of the rivers Bar, Bray, Hedden, and Lynn. Yes, sir, what's this? It's sheep dung, Jenkins. Put it down. Sheep poo! Sheep poo! Oh. Mostly mixed woodland and conifer. Sheep have been grazing here for 3,000 years, and it's a very good place to see red deer. Buzzards, sheep, 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 Now take this 
man. Yes, sir. And this campus. Yes, sir. You see that hill? What hill, sir? Over there. Where, sir? In the distance. Where in the distance? Oh, look at the horizon, Jenkins. <laughs> what, that little pimple? It's a hill, Jenkins, trust me. It's a long way off, sir. Don't answer back. Sorry, sir. Place your compass on the map. Check. Make sure the direction of travel arrow is pointing in the right direction. Check a room. Holding the compass base plate still, turn the compass housing so that the index line and orientating line matches up with the north-south vertical lines on your map. Check a room, you, you, Make sure the compass needle settles in line with the direction of travel arrow. Double check a room, you, you, you. Turn the compass housing four degrees for magnetic variation. Mega double check a Rooney Rooney Rooney. Line it up. Okay. And off you go. Hey? Off you go, Jenkins. But it's miles away, sir. It's only about 20 miles. 20 miles? Oh, look. Here's something to keep you entertained for the journey. Do have fun. But what if I get lost, sir? Ask a sheep. <sighs> now, Lucy. Lucy Smalls, where's that girl got to? Lucy! Pebble into water. Time ripples outwards. Flowers bud, open, run to seed. Human hands sculpting landscape like potter's clay. Burnings, clearing, for produce or profit. Shrinking more, green with phosphates. Fertilised for the fattening cow. Filed in common, South Hill, Glenthorpe. Stoey, armistice poppies, ploughed in the name of progress. A pebble into water, time ripples outwards. I don't know, Pa. What am I supposed to do, eh? You're all right. Up there with the boss man. But down here, it's hard. 
I've been trying to follow your advice, but government says if we ain't got enough acreage, we can't make enough profit. So we've either got to enlarge the farm or pack it in all together. So we turn to the plough, we have to, but as soon as you do that, there's all these do-gooders and, and, and tourist types coming out of the woodwork saying how we're destroying the natural beauty of the land. Well, it's only like that in the first place because we've been farming it all these years. Now there's this infection to be dealing with. Stop dying, left, right and center. I tell you, Par, you're better off out of it. Hold on a minute, love. You don't want to come up here. Is she sick? We'll have to slaughter the whole lot now. No, are you sure it's good enough? Well, she's shivering, got blisters off her feet. Oh, poor thing. Sore teats, no milk, proper tucked up she is. But where does it come from? Infected Argentine lamb. Started in Shropshire, now it's everywhere, apparently. They've had to cull half a million by now, I hear. So what are we going to do about it? Nothing we can do. Infection spreads as they move the stock from farm to farm to market. What a slaughter. 